Max is a game I've owned since I was 5 or 6 years old, getting it as a Christmas present. The artwork for the game is amazing, but the game itself is a so-so shooter with an interesting blending of styles. On top of the cool concept of gathering parts of your ship to form a large robot which gives you extra firepower, allows you to take more hits, and even wield a lightsaber-like sword, the game offers warps that take the player into an underworld area that plays a lot more like a traditional shoot-'em-up. The gameplay in the above ground levels kind of reminds me of an isometric shooter, something like Viewpoint or Zaxxon, minus the isometric view. Once you finally make your way through a level, either above ground or below, your choice, you then fight a three-headed dragon named Babylon, who resembles a Godzilla character. As a kid, I could never get very far in this game. I would usually avoid the lower level as much as possible because my never being good at shoot 'em ups pretty much began here with Mag Max. I always found the top side to be way more manageable. The abstract looking enemies are easier to dodge up there, even if the firepower of the full robot in the lower levels is actually quite impressive. The upper level enemies are definitely weirder, but being able to shoot objects that turn into robot parts kept me alive longer. Eventually I was able to alternate between the upper and lower levels, especially if one of them hit a hard part and the other level would be the easier route. When I'd get to a spot I couldn't pass, I would simply warp to the higher or lower level in the game. Honestly, this is actually a very unique design choice that still separates Mag Max to this day. You can play the entire game above or below, or alternate between the two. The game is still uniquely its own thing decades later. I don't remember how far I was able to get in this game as a child. I remember seeing the ocean level and maybe the last level. On skill alone, I think I may have made it to the third or fourth level, but on occasion we would borrow an NES game genie. So I do remember finding out that Mag Max is an endless looping game, it just goes on forever. You can pretty much beat this game in about 15 minutes, but your reward for beating it is starting back at the very first level. This kind of gives it an almost Atari or, well, retro arcade feel, but considering this is a port of an arcade game, I would say that fits. If I had one big complaint about the game, it's just that even as a kid, I liked the game, but only ever found it to be okay overall. There are some cool ideas at play here, the controls are very responsive, and I love the music, especially in the underworld. But the overall package is just... it's just okay. I've always found the game to be engaging, but unexceptional overall. Finding the most enjoyment out of popping it into my NES for occasional play, getting my fill, and moving on. This is definitely a game I've enjoyed over the years in short spurts. There's nothing broken here, the game plays well enough, but there's also not a lot of depth to Mad Max's gameplay either. The bottom line, Mad Max is a simple shooter with some cool ideas. Building a robot, fighting a dragon, that's pretty cool. Its gameplay is a little shallow and a little repetitive, yet still engaging enough to get some enjoyment out of. This is a middle of the road NES experience. As far as NES shooters go, you've played way better but you've also played way worse. There's nothing broken here, the challenge is pretty good and creating a giant robot and shifting between two planes of play is quite unique. If you own this in childhood, give it another try. For everyone else, it's worth playing. Play it for a bit, get your fill and move on. For occasional plays, this game is enjoyable but definitely won't appeal to everyone. 